Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody's having a wonderful day. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to put up a chapter yesterday. I have been having these super, super long days trying to get my house in order. I don't think I told you guys, I ended up buying my house back uh, because the people that originally put the offer in didn't want it because it wasn't zoned properly what, for what they needed. And so instead of just backing out, both of us backing out from the offer, they basically sold the offer to somebody else, which was a not a too nice of a thing to do. Anyways, I ended up having to pay that guy to back off and, and get out of the offer. So my house still isn't sold. And, uh, busy, busy, busy trying to get things organized. So that is why I didn't get a video up yesterday. But I'm here now. Okay, guys, chapter 19. As the evening approached, so did our anxiety. We had the kids bathed and in their pajamas earlier than usual. And when we said it was bedtime, no one argued. They were so exhausted from their lack of sleep the night before that they didn't even argue when we told them they were going to all be sleeping in Brianna's bed because she had the largest bed. We decided to put Mandy in there as well. We expected that that wouldn't go over too well, but we were wrong. They snuggled up and fell fast asleep. We sat in front of the TV and stared. None of us talked. Once in a while, either Scott or I would get up and take a look outside with the binoculars and scanning the tree lines and then back to Mandy's room to look out the side window. We didn't have any way to view the woods on the other side of the garage where we had found the garbage and the stairs, which was really a disadvantage because we knew they would go back there. Scott just got back from making his rounds when Lisa stood up. This is ridiculous. I'm going to go make some coffee. I'll help you, I said, and followed her into the kitchen. Lisa stood at the sink, letting the cold water spill over the side of the pot as she stared out the window. She looked worn out, and it broke my heart. She didn't deserve to have this fear. None of us did. As I stood behind her, watching her, I noticed her shoulders slump and began to shake. I realized she was crying, so I moved in to hold her, and as I did, she turned around to face me. We stood there holding each other when she whispered into my ear that she was so mad. It was the last thing I expected to hear, so I pulled back a little so I could see her face. She placed her hands on either side of my face and I thought she was going to kiss me until she turned my head to the side so she could whisper into my ear the reason she was so angry. So, Lisa whispered, earlier Kathy and I were talking and I said maybe we should get the sheriff involved. Kathy got really bothered by that and said, no, we can't because he'll tell my grandfather and he'll make me come back home to live. I could see it was upsetting her, said Lisa, but I was trying to be honest and show her I cared about her. So then I said, maybe Kathy, that's not such a bad idea. At least you'll be safe. Yeah, that is true, I agreed. Then what happened? She freaked out. She yelled, are you kidding me? And then she ran out of the room. We haven't spoken a word since, and I'm feeling really uncomfortable, said Lisa. Wow, I'm shocked, I said, when Lisa finished her story. That was so unlike Kathy. Normally, she was soft-spoken, kind-hearted, and caring. We all are under so much stress right now. Let's cut her some slack and see how this plays out, I suggested. Lisa nodded in agreement and started making a pot of coffee. Uh, here, hun, let me do it, and you can grab a pound cake and cut it up, okay, I laughed. I'm starting to think you add something when I'm not looking, she sighed. I literally do everything you do, and my coffee tastes like crud. Don't worry about it. I can't make babies like you do, I laughed. Yeah, funny guy. As we sat drinking our coffee, Kathy burst into tears. I wonder if crying was a contagious thing with women. 
But, of course, I was concerned too. Lisa, I'm so sorry for the way I behaved earlier. This isn't for me to freak out like that, Kathy sobbed. Please try and understand that I view all of you as my family now. And if I was made to go back to my grandfather's house, I would go insane with worry. I want to be here with you guys, not just Scotty. Lisa went over and wrapped her arms around Kathy and they both cried as they held each other. Scott and I just looked at the ceiling, hoping it would end soon. Look, said Scott as he pointed to the living room window. We all looked to see what he was pointing at. And then it dawned on me that the security light was on. Both dogs were on their feet, hackles up and teeth bared as their low growls filled the silent room. Turn the lights out, I whispered, and shut off the TV. The girls were doing their best to calm the dogs. Their growling was getting louder, and the last thing we wanted to do was to alert the creatures of our whereabouts in the house. Scott, can you see if the security lights are on in the back? I asked as I stood peering out the front window from behind the thick curtains. He answered yes and ran down the hall towards the bedrooms to check on those lights as well. They're all on, he said as he came back into the living room, carrying two fully loaded shotguns and a box of shells. He handed one to me and the other to Lisa and ran back to get a couple more. Just as he entered the living room the second time, the banging started on the bedroom wall. Oh no, please God, not again, cried Lisa. I wrapped my arms around her and I held her tight. My shotgun within range, should I need to grab it quick. Scott had gone over to the window, carefully pulled the curtain back so he could see out. He whispered, the lights are still on. The girls were able to calm the dogs down as they'd been sitting in front of the couch, panting and whimpering every few seconds or so. They must have sensed something else because both jumped up and moved around the middle of the living room. They stood there once again with hackles up growling and baring their teeth as they stared at the front door. I secretly thanked God that they were on our side. Each of us sat at the edge of our seats, looking back and forth from the dogs to the front door and then back to the dogs again when Kathy said, Listen. But because the dogs were so anxious, they were growling and whimpering very loudly. Scott called them to him and commanded them to lie down. They dropped to the floor but continued to stare at the door. Kathy was right. We could hear a moaning sound coming from the door. It was as if something had their mouth right beside the crack in the door. The sound was getting louder by the second. Within a minute, it was screaming and moaning so loud we had to cover our ears. I actually thought that I might have a heart attack because it seemed to vibrate in my chest. Then it changed from screaming to roaring. There was so much power and force behind it. It totally engulfed the whole house. We were so busy trying not to hear it at first that we missed the fact that there were different pitches coming from various locations around the house. The dogs were running down the hall, then into the kitchen, then back into the living room. They were howling as well, much like a wolf howls at the moon. It was when I followed them down the hall that I noticed there was something screeching, not roaring. In the kitchen, it was a different pitch, but... All were as deafening as the one in the living room. Then it was dead quiet, eerily quiet. The silence was actually louder than the screaming, screeching, and roaring until we heard a tiny little voice call out, Mommy, can I come down? Lisa jumped up and ran down the hall. A moment later, she returned with Mandy in her arms. I'll go up and check on the girls, Kathy said, as she stood up and walked down the hall. Scott and I went from window to window, searching. All of the security lights were off. Do you think they're gone? Scott whispered to me as we stood at the back door, looking into the darkness. I'm pretty sure it's safe now, I said, pointing down at the two exhausted dogs who were asleep at our feet. Kathy came into the dining room, laughing and shaking her head. What? Scott and I both said at the same time. Oh, the girls are sleeping, she said. Want to know how? We nodded. They pulled apart Kleenex and balled up the pieces and made earplugs. Smart girls, she said. 
And that is the end of chapter 19. So I think I'm going to be super nice and do chapter 20 and then put them up one behind the other. It's because I love you so much. Okay, guys, hang on to those horses.